we'll see the overview aws overview and all the services like compute and networking services storage and content delivery services database services then management and governance security identity and compliance services application services and container services we'll just uh, see the overview we'll not discuss details uh, today we'll just see what all the services supported by aws and we we'll just see just a overview and after the uh, session we'll go to every service by detail next is elastic load balancing so elastic load balancing one service by aws it automatically distributes incoming application traffic across multiple amazon ec2 instances in the cloud so um, uh, suppose you are working with a web service and uh, that web service is deployed in one ec2 instance one virtual machines in aws cloud and you are having more loads so there is one service called elastic load balancing load balancer you can say in, in the term load balancer you might know this and it will automatically distributes incoming application traffic to multiple amazon ec2 instances load balancing is balance the load so there may be more load in your service so this service will balancing the load distribute the loads next is auto scaling auto scaling allows organization to scale amazon ec2 capacity up or down automatically according to conditions defined for your particular load so this is one this is one service this will automatically scale your capacity scale means suppose you are using uh, two virtual machines for a particular load and now uh, maybe uh, due to some circumstances your load has been increased and you need more virtual machines more ec2 instance so in that case you have to go there and increase one or two right to manage your load for example suppose one virtual machine having capability of managing 1000 request per second and you are using two and they having capability like to manage 2000 request per second now you you got some big billion sale or whatever maybe some load uh, some spike will come like a particular time and and that may be 5000 request per second and you are having only two right so uh, to manage those thing what will happen you have to increase your capability right so you have to come and uh, in, uh, create some uh, virtual machine so that they can manage the load right but aws providing one service called auto scaling so this will uh, see some load increases and uh, they will manage using some um, uh, metrics they will check some metrics some conditions you have to set then they will automatically increase for you no need to go and uh, uh, do it manually the auto scaling service will automatically increase your capacity or decrease your capacity so you have to set some condition and using those condition they will scale up and down aws lambda aws lambda uh, it is a zero admin compute platform to back end web servers developers that runs your code for you on your aws cloud so this is uh, one uh, compute service you can say and serverless serverless means you are no no you are not going to create one virtual machine for this or you are not going to uh, create any platform for uh, running your lambda function it is uh, zero administration like this is fully managed by aws you have to just write your code you just write your code and this code this will be run by aws so no need to create any infrastructure so aws lambda runs your backend code on its aws compute fleet of amazon ec2 instances so internally they are using amazon virtual machines across multiple availability zones in a region which provide the high availability security performance scalability of the aws infrastructure so aws having responsibility for i availability security performance and scalability so no need to worry about for that just write your code only you have to provide your source code next is uh, your compute and networking services like aws elastic beanstalk uh, it is a fastest and simplest way to get a web application up and running on aws 
developers can simply upload their application code and services automatically handles all the details such as resource provisioning load balancing auto scaling and monitoring so this is one service uh, elastic beanstalk you you have to only provide your source code and it will create everything create everything means they will provision uh, some virtual machines they will create some virtual machines they will create load balancer for you they will create auto scaling for you they will do monitoring for you and this service will do everything for you no need to create as your own you have to just upload your source code next is uh, aws direct connect so it is a service it allows organization to establish a dedicated network connection from their data center to aws so we will learn in detail so aws uh, what is the difference between your vpn and aws direct connect aws direct connect is very faster and uh, it is a connection it is connection from your data center to aws this is not internet connection they are you can think about this is a uh, network connection that will be provided some uh, network providers like your jio um, so uh, this will be this connection is very faster in comparison to your internet connection amazon route 53 it is highly available and scalable domain name system service so it will provide you to um, buy any domain and this route 53 will manage domains so like your uh, um, uh, godaddy so godaddy is providing domain for you and they are managing their domains so similarly you can use this rama amazon route 53 to manage your domain names so any any question still now uh, what is ec2 instance can you please repeat ec2 instance ec2 instance is a virtual machine virtual machine means suppose uh, uh, you are uh, you are using some laptop right and this laptop having os maybe in windows or may, uh, maybe in mac and uh, you are having some uh, configuration hardware configuration mm -hmm. i'm using this intel processor i'm using in this amount of hard drive right so similarly they will create one machine for you machine means os plus your hardware configuration in amazon cloud okay. and you are going to access that instance using internet connection and using some software like your remote desktop so suppose you are going to create one windows uh, os there windows machine there and from your laptop you are accessing that windows machine using one connection using one software called rdp that is provided and you are providing the ip address and accessing that instance from your local okay okay and similarly you can create many types of uh, instances like uh, uh, linux uh, your uh, centos your ubuntu your fedora uh, many many uh, set of os is supported by the, those aws ec2 instance so we will discuss this maybe next class or next to next class okay we'll see in detail how we can connect this is just an overview okay Uh, next is amazon oh, okay route will be completed then we'll see a uh, storage and content delivery aws provides a variety of services to meet your storage needs such as your amazon simple storage service amazon cloud front amazon elastic block storage efs s3 glacier and storage gateway so first we'll uh, see about amazon simple storage service it provides developers and it teams with highly durable and scalable object store that handles virtually unlimited amount of data and large number of concurrent users so this is you can say the core service of aws the core uh, storage service where you can store your data like for example your uh, google store so in the google store you are uploading uh, files like maybe some video files maybe some image files some zip files so similarly aws having this service amazon s3 simple storage service amazon s3 provides cost effective object storage for wide variety of use cases including backup recovery big data analytic disaster recovery and content distribution so you can uh, you can also store some uh, long term data in amazon s3 and their price is very minimal 
Next is Amazon Glacier. Uh, Amazon Glacier also similar to S3 and uh, it is secure, durable and extremely low cost. If you compare to S3, it is very extremely low cost service for data archiving and long term backup. Amazon Glacier is for long term backup and their price is very less in comparison to S3. To keep uh, cost low for customers, Amazon Glacier is optimized for infrequent access data where a retrieval time of several hours is suitable. So what is the difference like S3 and Glacier? So if you, if you use the Glacier, their cost is very, very low in comparison to S3, but uh, there is some condition like this is infrequent access. And if you uh, retrieve your data and it can take some time, maybe some several hours to download your data from Glacier. Next is Amazon Elastic Block Store. See, this is an object store. Uh, mostly you will use for storage. Storage means some long term storage. And you can, uh, uh, and this storage is like uh, you can say shareable. It can access like large number of concurrent users. Maybe uh, you can uh, upload one video like your YouTube and you can provide your link to anybody. So, concurrently, many users can access your data. Next, Amazon Elastic Block Store. It provides persistent block level storage volumes. See, this is the storage volumes and those are object storage. Storage volumes means you can think about a hard drive of your uh, laptop. So this is type of one hard drive and this is used in your EC2 instances, your virtual machines hard drive, you can think about this. And each Amazon EBS volume is automatically replicated with one its availability zone to protect organization from component failure offering high availability and durability. So uh, this is a network storage, you can say this is a network storage and while creating your, uh, your virtual machines or your EC2 instance in AWS platform, you are using this service to create a volume or use a volume. So maybe you can, uh, you want, uh, I need some uh, 100 GB of hard drive for my virtual machines, you can take 100 GB of EBS volume for your virtual machine. Next is AWS Storage Gateway. It is a service connecting uh, on an on-premise software appliance with uh, your cloud-based storage to provide seamless and secure integration between your organizations, on-premises, IT environment and AWS storage infrastructure. So uh, maybe uh, you can use this service. Suppose you are having your own data center uh, and your own data center is communicated to AWS. In that case, you can use this storage gateway so that using the storage gateway, you can communicate your uh, storage environment to your AWS storage infrastructure. Suppose you are using S3, so you are, go you are going to upload any data means you are using internet and you are going to that particular bucket and doing that. But instead you can use this AWS storage gateway. Uh, if this storage gateway is required if, if you are uh, working for a company and your company wants to uh, do some uh, data transfer right to the AWS platform. So you can use this gateway that is called storage gateway. This service supports industry standard storage protocols that work with existing applications. Next is uh, Amazon Cloud Front. Cloud Front. Cloud Front is a CDN. You might have uh, uh, learn about CDN, the content delivery network. So there are many uh, CDN providers in the market. The popular one is Akamai and uh, AWS Cloud Front. So uh, Azure having their own CDN, Google having their own CDN. So it is a content delivery web service. So this integrates with other AWS Cloud services to give and high way to distribute content to users across the world with low latency, high data transfer speeds and no minimum usage commitment. Anyone know about CDN? It's like content delivery. Uh, yes, yes, this is a content delivery network. 
Ah, so many websites you see. Uh, um, yes. Locky.com. There are some websites. Uh, for a, those are content. What is that? Uh, Condinash.com if open. GQ.com. Those are uh, hosted from uh, CDNs. I know. Yes. Because he, suppose you are server in uh, maybe you are in USA and uh, your server in UK region, right? And uh, there is some services you are using and uh, uh, accessing data from U UK to USA may be slow, right? So uh, this CDN help you there and CDN are the servers nearest you. Suppose you are uh, staying in USA in some area and those CDN servers will be in your nearest region and they will cache those data from the original server and they, they will provide to you. The nearest server will be serving you so that you will not see your um, problem in your latency and data transfer speeds. You will not think that uh, my server is, is in very far away and I will be slow. So to uh, to uh, uh, solve this problem, the CDN servers will be there in nearest you. They will cache those data from the main server and they will uh, you will be served from those CDN servers so that you will not face any data latency and those data transfer speed will be very good for you, right? Next is uh, uh, Elastic File System. It provides a simple serverless Elastic File System that lets you share file data without provisioning or managing storage. It can be used with AWS Cloud Services and on-premise resources and is built to scale on-demand to petabytes without disturbing application. You can think about that this is a file system and uh, this, uh, this can be uh, shareable between your EC2 instances. And uh, suppose you are uh, using some hundred of EC2 instances and you need some shareable resource, you can use this elastic file system. So any questions still now, we'll see database services. Uh, AWS provides fully managed relational and no SQL databases and in uh, memory caching services also and a petabyte uh, data warehouse, petabyte scale data warehouse. See, one uh, RDS, uh, you can say uh, relational database, no SQL database, caching server and your data warehouse. These four type of database supported by AWS. Amazon Relational Database. It provides a fully managed relational database with support for many popular open source and commercial database engines. It is cost efficient service that allows organization to launch secure, highly available, fault tolerant, production ready database in minutes. That means AWS provides many type of database engines like your um, MySQL, your uh, Microsoft SQL Server, your uh, Oracle database, uh, there are many six or seven databases provided by AWS. So you just go and uh, create those database engines. No need to manage those OSS. You just direct use those engines using their uh, URLs and user ID and password. We'll create everything. We'll create every database and we'll connect from our uh, uh, our applications from uh, from our um, laptops or desktops. Next is Amazon DynamoDB. DynamoDB is a NoSQL database. It is a fast and flexible NoSQL database service for all applications that need to consistency and single digit millisecond latency at a scale. It, if you compare to RDS, Amazon DynamoDB is faster. It is fully managed database and supports both document and key value data models. Its flexible data model and reliable performance make it a great fit for mobile, web, gaming, art tech, internet of things and many other applications. And this is not uh, relational, this is no SQL. No SQL means uh, there is, uh, your SQL command will not uh, run there because this is not relational. And the first one is relational like Oracle and um, SQL Server like that. And Dynamo is no SQL. Can anyone tell about other no SQL databases in the market? Mongo. Yes, MongoDB is one of the popular NoSQL Redis. data. Redis. Yes, Redis. Yes. Redis also cache. Cache. 
yeah. can also yeah uh, next is uh, amazon redshift redshift it is a fast fully managed petabyte scale data warehouse service that makes it simple and cost effective to analyze your stock uh, structure data it is a redshift you can say one uh, data warehouse service where you can analyze your structured data you can uh, do some uh, data analysis there amazon redshift provides a standard sql interface that let organization use existing business intelligent tool so using some tools you can analyze your data uh, your data may be in petabyte scale so you can store like some uh, tb of data or pb of data there and analyze your data using some tools that is amazon redshift so if you are uh, working on big data analysis or those areas you can use this tool or service next is amazon elastic cache it is a web service that simplifies deployment operation and scaling of in memory cache see the rds are not in memory they are they are like some uh, virtual machines where your database engine is installed and you are using that and elastic cache is in memory like your caching server you can say you from your uh, virtual machines to rds this can come in between and this will uh, cache your data and uh, your uh, data con communication will be faster if you use some um, elastic cache the service improves the performance of web applications by allowing organization to retrieve information from fast manage in memory caches is it clear or i will explain more uh what is in memory cache in memory cache means uh, uh, you can say see think about some caching caching means uh, uh, suppose you are going to uh, fetch some data from the rds so for that you are writing some query like select this table from this or uh, joining this like this way so it will take some time to retrieve from your rds because your data is having millions to billions of data right and suppose you are running one query there and it will take some time maybe it may take some seconds or maybe few seconds or maybe some millisecond uh, let's uh, you are working with a very complicated query and it uh, it took like 10 seconds for each query right so suppose uh, your service is approaching your database and curing uh, your uh, uh, rds server it is like very late like 5 seconds or 3 seconds like that way and this elastic cache will come in between your service and your database so let's uh, one minute suppose uh, this is your uh, service and uh, this is your R rds right and you are uh, curing your rds and you are using some uh, you can say some um, uh, complicated query and it takes some time right and every time your service is curing your database and getting same amount of time to retrieve the same query right but for a solution you can use some in between cache server here and your service will not directly contact to rds it will see in the cache if this is available so it's fine otherwise your cache will your uh, service will uh, get from the cache and it will be uh, sorry it will be right in your cache those those information to the cache so next time when service will uh, face those data it will not go to the rds instead it will check in the cache server whether my queries data is present or not okay so, so if the present sorry uh, you are saying sorry hello so it is very similar to cache memory you are saying yes yes this is a cache memory and uh, this is some uh, this will be very faster okay okay Uh, next we will see uh, management and governance so we will uh, cover only these two and uh, 
will cover rest tomorrow amazon cloud watch it is a monitoring service for your aws cloud resources and application running on aws this is basically a monitoring service this will monitor your resources maybe your virtual machine your database system your cache server your s3 buckets okay this is the monitoring service from the cloud watch it allows organization to collect and track metrics collect and monitoring log files and set alarm so it can collect the log files from the services it can collect the metrics metrics means how much cpu i have used how much network bytes i have used so those things will be captured to this cloud watch and you can we can monitor those services from the cloud watch next is cloud formation cloud formation gives developers and system admins an effective way to create and manage collection of related aws services provisioning and updating them in orderly and predictable fashion so you can say this cloud formation is a iac tool infrastructure as code and using some source code or using some json based or yaml based based templates you can create your infrastructure right so using some like some code you can uh, create your uh, virtual machine you can create your uh, instead of going to uh, console and creating those things you can uh, write some uh, script some yaml script to create your infrastructures resource you can create also one database server using cloud formation AWS Cloud Trail. Uh, it is a web service that records your AWS API call for account and delivers log files for audit and review. So whatever for uh, working on you in your accounts for a particular account, those APIs will be recorded in the Cloud Trail service. Suppose one day uh, someone uh, log into your account and create something or delete something, those things will be recorded in Cloud Trail service. so you can use this cloud trail service for audit and review purpose the recorded information includes the identity of the api caller the time of the api call the source ip address the uh, of the api caller the request parameters and the response element written by the service so these things will be captured in the cloud trail service aws system manager it gives you visibility and control of your infrastructure on aws so this is basically one service from where you can see your infrastructure the detail of your uh, suppose you are having some 100 of ec2 instances you can see here and you can manage those things system manager provides a unified user interface so you can view operational data and multiple aws services and allows you to automate operational task across your aws resources you can do the operational task from the aws system manager for example suppose you are having 1000 of ec2 instances is running for your company and your manager ask that for every ec2 instance i need to update those patches some security patches so instead of going one by one system this is one place the system manager you can go there and you can view all the uh, uh, your virtual machines and uh, you can uh, run some automated uh, patch or automated patch so that all the um, virtual machines will update their patching or some security updates okay we will continue tomorrow if uh, today if you have any questions uh, please let me know Hello friends welcome to our channel ABC of cloud my name is nirmal parida and we are providing aws full course tutorial which is completely free we are providing the sessions on aws concepts practical sessions and hands on labs and discussion of quick questions please like and subscribe our channel so that you will never miss our new updates